There are 300 million peanut butter M&Ms manufactured every year. How many of those do I need to look at to have a high statistical probability that I know exactly the mix of different colors that they manufacture? Hi, I'm Jen, and today I'm going to be talking about sample sizes. Most of the time when we talk about statistics, we're not able to get measurements on every single part of the population that we need to measure and understand. Populations can be large, sometimes infinitely large, and in some cases, the ability to gather every piece of information is incredibly difficult. In our case, we're going to look at peanut butter M&Ms manufactured in the US. To have a chance at understanding this information, we're going to look at a subset or a sample of our larger population that represents the population as a whole. Ideally, we always want a random sample. This means that every single member of the population has an equal chance at being picked and picking one member of the population has no impact on picking another member of the population. Truly random samples are incredibly difficult to find because it normally isn't possible to really get this randomness. I picked up a bag of M&Ms that has 159 M&Ms. While this bag has an assortment of different M&Ms, there are limits to its randomness. First, it's just one single bag, and by selecting that bag, I've predetermined what other members of the population are going to be in it. These M&Ms are also manufactured at multiple different plants, and this bag is only from one plant on one day and one time of a production run. So it really isn't truly random. The sampling I'm doing is called availability sampling. It's trying to pick a population that should be somewhat representative, but it's based on what's available. It's one bag from one grocery store in my area. To show you how big of a difference the bag that you select can make, I also picked up two other bags. I picked up the small bag that you would see at the checkout, the sharing size bag, and this gigantic party size bag. These each have different number of M&Ms and very different mixes of colors. When we start with a very small sample, look at the mix that's in this bag from the checkout. If I thought that this sample was representative, I'd be assuming that yellow is a very rare color in a bag of M&Ms. But if we look at the next size up, we see the color variation looks a little bit different. It looks a little more evenly divided. And as we go to the biggest bag, we see it evening out even more among the colors. We can easily take this medium size bag worth of M&Ms and understand a lot about that medium size bag. There are a few different issues we need to contend with when trying to take the results of looking at a sample and apply them to the entire population. We need to make sure our sample is representative of our entire population. You can really see how different this is when we compare the three different size bag of M&Ms and how their mix changes. Since it would be both expensive and very time consuming for me to obtain a truly random sample of M&Ms manufactured throughout the US, even if I selected just a one year time period, I'm going to have to make some assumptions. I reached out to the company and while they wouldn't share the percentage of different colors that they manufactured, they did tell me that everything was mixed together and then the bags were filled by weight. Since I know the colors are mixed and then filled by weight, I at least have some chance of this being somewhat representative. Even though the bags are filled by weight and everything is mixed together before filling, the smaller the sample size, the more likely that we're going to see some variation from our two true population. Samples that are representative are also called unbiased samples. Let's look at how to calculate the sample size we need if our sample was truly random. First, we'll look at how to calculate sample size for an infinite population, and then we'll adjust this when we have a finite population. For really large values, there's going to be very minimal difference. The formula for sample size of an infinite population is z squared times the population times 1 minus the population over m squared. Z is the z score, and we can get that from a table based on our confidence level. The confidence level is the probability that the value of a parameter 
falls within a specified range of values. So let's say we want the result of analyzing our sample to give us a 95% confidence that our sample matches the total population. In that case, we'll use a z-score of 1.960. P is our population proportion, and we assume this to be 50%. M is our margin of error. We want to pick a small amount that allows for some miscalculation or change in our circumstances. 5% is fairly typical. Let's take all these values and plug them into our formula. Calculating this formula, we get a resulting sample size of 384.16. Our sample size, if we're able to get a truly random sample on an infinite population, is 385 data points to be able to say with 95% confidence that we know that our sample lies within that range. Now we adjust our sample size for a finite population. In the case of our M&Ms, our population is 300 million. Here's the equation to get adjusted sample size based on our population size. Since our population of M&Ms produced is so large, our sample size doesn't really differ from the sample size for an infinite population. That's great if we're able to get a truly random sample, but I've already said that I can't really, for an effective amount of cost and time, get a truly random sample of peanut butter M&Ms to approximate the population. In those cases, be aware of where your information might be biased and how you can adjust for it. For instance, I know the sample that I have currently only represents one manufacturing plant. So an easy way to help remove that bias is to get a bag from the other manufacturing plant as well, in case they have slightly different mixes, which at least historically they have on regular M&Ms. And as we've already seen, selecting a larger sample size helps level out some of the differences that may be exaggerated in very small sample sizes. Thanks so much for watching. In the next video, I'll be talking about calculating joint probability or the probability that two things occur at the same time.